What is up? Welcome back to Vikings Vantage presented by Pepsi. Gabe Henderson here alongside Chris Corso and our special guest, Mr. James Lynch. James, how's it going, man? It's going good. How are you? Good. No complaints. So last week, you, you got your first career sack. Last week was your first NFL game, and in your first NFL game, you got your first career sack. Could you yes. walk us through that moment just from, you know, heading into the game, you know, actually knowing that you were going to play to getting that first sack to that feeling after you got your sack? Because that celebration, you felt that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think that obviously the first moment I realized that I was actually playing is you go to your locker and my shoulder pads with my jersey running and everything, and a couple of guys came and was like, hey, man, like, just kind of do your thing and just have fun out there. So – for me to sit back and just just kind of watch the first few weeks, obviously I'm, I'm cheering them on and hoping we, we do everything right. But for me to be able to kind of have the mindset of that I'm playing, obviously I was pretty excited. And then just that play that happened, it, it just kind of – there's no other way to describe it than just having fun. And I've been here for however long now, and now I'm close with everyone. So just to be able to celebrate with, like, especially DJ, the rookie, uh, uh, other defensive end that we have, um, yeah. seeing him on the field, like, celebrating with me and then out there with Armand. We've been through so much now. We've been through camp and all that. So – um, just having that moment with them and just knowing I did something to kind of help the team, obviously, it's just a great feeling. And it's only Russell Wilson you got the sack on, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's one of the, the premier quarterbacks. I heard about that from a bunch of people. But, um, I mean, if you look at the play, it wasn't just what I did. I mean, everyone on the defense did their job, obviously. So it gave it gave it the opportunity to me to, to make the play. So just just like our, our coach always say, just whenever the play comes, just make it. So I just, just having fun out there, just doing our thing. Speaking of the coach, the one positive of not being at the game and being able to watch it um, on the broadcast, we get to see Andre Patterson embrace you on the sideline. It seemed like yes. that was a really special moment. Like he put your, his arms around you and, and kind of embraced you. What was that moment like? What did he say to you? Yeah, um, obviously no one's in our rooms with us and no one does the things that we do. And we're always together all the time, just us and the D-line and, and him as well, obviously. So. He always tells us that, uh, that we're his boys and don't do anything for us. So obviously for him, uh, seeing us out there succeed and whether it's me or someone who's been here like Shamar for seven or eight years or whatever it is, he, he just wants us to, to have fun and, and do our job and, and obviously ha uh, get the W at the end of the day. So uh, seeing his face on the sign like light up and, and him being so happy for me just obviously just kind of shows what kind of coach he is and it makes you want to play for him and makes you want to be here for as long as you can because you know he's – He's kind of a one in a million kind of coach. He's always there for you. From when you got drafted in April to when you got here for training camp till you know, going through the season to getting your first career tackle slash sack slash QB hit, uh, can you talk about your progression? Yeah. Um, at Baylor my last year, I was a defensive end. So coming here, going inside, obviously it was a little bit of a transition for me. And, and like I've just said, uh, having Coach Dre has made it so much easier for me. He's always just kind of making the picture clear and, and helping me along and, and I'll mess up, and obviously he gets on me, but he does it, in, and to me, he does it in the right way and making sure I understand what I did wrong and what I need to do to, to fix it. So just being here and, and just doing everything every day is kind of like what, what I've always talked about is just chopping wood and just making sure you just keep coming out every day. Whether you have a good day or a bad day, you kind of have to just put it behind you and just kind of show up the next day and just do whatever they tell you. And then obviously with Coach Zim as, as the head of our, our ship, you would say uh, defense is kind of a big deal. So having their smart minds, obviously, you know, you're going to get the best of the best. So every day you just kind of cope, show it and say, yes, sir. Cause you know, they're smart. So you were inactive the first couple of weeks of the season and you get the chance to play on Sunday night football. What was that feeling like finding out that you were going to play and what do you plan to do going forward to continue to build on this? Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, just, it, it was a pretty surreal feeling. Obviously as a kid, you just dream about playing and, and obviously, especially on a Sunday night game where, you know, like the, the tone, like the little ringtone or the intro music to the game and stuff like that. Yeah. We played it every day. I uh, practice over me, like just hearing that, like I kind of get the chills and stuff like that. So it was definitely a cool moment. But um, in this game, you can't really uh, stop and look at the lights because obviously if you do that, someone's going to kind of put you on your back. So uh, once we got out to warm, so I was kind of just doing my thing and, and obviously just kind of just talking to the guys, like they kind of calmed me down and just told me like just do my thing and just basically just have fun and play the game into the game for whole life. So uh, obviously that's what I tried to do, and I wasn't perfect, but I, I did a decent job, I would say. So uh, I'm building on it, just kind of looking and, and see what I messed up and, and where I need to improve, and just kind of work on those areas and make sure I can do that the, the next week I get to play. So this upcoming Sunday, Atlanta Falcons, we all know they're on five. However, their, their offense, they run over 69 plays a game. So there's a lot of opportunity to get into that rotation this upcoming Sunday. But after, you know, watching the film, seeing what those guys do, what, what are some things that stand out about the Atlanta Falcons? 
Um, I mean, if you look at them on tape, like you can't really find any area where you're like, oh, like they're going to be soft here. That's going to be easy here. They have so many weapons and their offensive line is a great offensive line as well. So uh, everything they do that, that we have to prepare for is obviously we've got to bring our A game. So there's no real area. I think that's the most impressive thing is there's no area of they have like the running back is amazing receivers O line. They got Matt Ryan there. So. Uh, you just got to make sure you're on your P's and Q's for everything. And, and I believe in our defense and, and what we have prepared for them. So I'm excited for Sunday. How would you describe your game to Vikings fans? I mean, they're, they're definitely familiar with you being the fourth round draft pick this year. But what do you bring to this defense and, and what are you going to bring going forward this season? Yeah, I, I've said it for a while and it's kind of how I've always been is just whatever they ask me to do, whatever they need me to do, whether it's it's get water for D or something, just as funny as it may sound to me, like if it's going to help us win, if I need to catch uh, throws from Kirk on the sideline, like I just want to win. That's that's how you have fun. And that's like whenever we were up on uh, any game and you're in a close game like that, you're just having fun. That's what you want to be in. So for me, just whatever I can do to make sure we're in a game and we have a chance to win, it's, it's fun for me. So that's just why I've always loved the game. I think I think if you're catching passes from Kirk, there there might be a problem there. <laughs> <laughs> no man, but we're, you talk about winning these games. Like these these last three games, we're one and two in these last three games. Um, but those two losses are by you know one point. Like we're, we're right there. So what is it going to take for us to you know get over that hump and start winning those close ones? Because those two losses against Tennessee and Seattle, those are undefeated teams. Yeah, and obviously a lot of people are saying that those are tough teams, but. Uh, when you look at it, it all comes back to us. And we've emphasized that this week. And, and Coach Zim has made a, a big emphasis on coming out of the half strong and, and making sure that there's no point in, in the game that we're tired or we're just down or whatever. So we're up by 20. We're down by 20. Like, we don't care. We're just going to keep playing the way that, that Vikings play. And, and just uh, basically what we've been saying is, is wherever the chips fall, we're going to look at the scoreboard at the end of the game and just know that we, we played as, as hard as we could the whole game. My last question is, what's it like learning from guys like Eric Kendricks I know Anthony Barr is injured this year, but some of these veterans on the Vikings defense are waiting for Neil to get back. Yeah, uh, Unique and Gakwe, I mean, just coming in having such a big impact. What's the what's what's the the feeling like in this defensive room? You have so many guys that you can learn from. Yeah, uh, and a, a big one for me right now is Shamar because he, he obviously plays a position nice. that I play, and and having him and, and the knowledge that he has, but having everyone there, and then obviously like the coaches as well, but not only just talking to them, but just watching them on film and studying how they do things and, and not even on the field. It's like the routine of how they take care of their body, their mind, and making sure that they're ready for the games and stuff. So being able to pick their brains and, and talking to – and I still talk to Anthony a lot, actually. And um, nice. just just being able to be in a room with them and them knowing you and, like, being – like, there's no – even though I'm a rookie, whatever, like, they'll, any question I have for them, they're, they're willing to tell me whatever I want to know just so I can better my game. And it's obviously just a blessing to be able to be in this situation. You got a lot of guys to learn from and a lot of guys that's going to help you get prepared. The last question, mental preparation. What does that look like for you? Yeah, I think uh, I'm, I'm still learning because this is obviously my first year in the NFL and it's a way different game. And, and that's part of why I talked to Shamar a lot because he's basically played uh, every team. So he knows that the ins and outs and how things kind of work. And talking to him, Jaleel, uh, any of the really DTs, is just like what they look for and to, to watch and film or what they look for and in a practice or what they want to do is just kind of how I've tried to progress my mind and, and preparing for a Sunday. So I'm still in the, a lot of work to do, but I've gotten definitely a little bit better. So just keep, like I said, just chopping away at the wood and just figuring out new ways to, to make myself more prepared. The rookie, the Husker. Husker, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Husker. <laughs> James Lynch joins <laughs> us. This is the Vikings Vantage. Thank you, James. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, man. Yep. Thank you. Thank you.